What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Yeah, you saw the title. What the hell? Why not? We talk about freshies so much. Yeah, it's way too early. But who cares? I want to talk about fall fragrances today, specifically some designers that I'm really excited to wear because literally all but three of these I bought this year. And it hasn't really been the best weather to wear them. They're heavier. They're better for fall and winter weather. I'm eager to wear them. What can I say? I want to sniff them. I want to talk about them. I want to recommend them because I'm excited to wear them too. So we're talking about my 10 fall designers I'm eager to wear this fall. Just way too soon. Stay tuned. Starting with one of the better releases to come out at the very beginning of this year that kind of was an afterthought because it came out at the very beginning of the year. And for both of us, most of us, it got pretty warm pretty quick. Stronger with you, tobacco. So this is a very warm and spicy fragrance. It's really not like a mega tobacco forward fragrance. There's the earthy tobacco smell here, but it's much more on a peppered spice. Pepper, cinnamon, all these different like warm, cozy spices. Far and wide, the spiciest of the line. All of them have their share, but this stuff, fiery hot, earthy, ambery, a little uh, almost leather-like, if you will. There's a tone to it, like has this um, slight kind of edgy, animalistic tone. Not super animalic or anything like that. Any of you that smelled it, I think you kind of understand where I'm going with this. Performance is phenomenal. You know, I mean, all of them perform really well, even the two fresher fragrances only in Freeze in this line, which not all that fresh, but when you compare them to the rest of the line, it's the fresh ones of the bunch. But yeah, pretty excited to wear this one this fall. So don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to rush summer to an end, but maybe kind of sort at the same time because autumn's the best season for fragrance lovers. Just saying. And I can't wait to wear this one. Strong with you, tobacco. Another one, new to the collection. I ended up buying all three at once. This one's honeyed sweet, a little woodsy. Of course, there's a touch of spice. I think it's the best of the three. Jean-Paul Gaultier Scandal Absolue. This is really, really good. Really good. Like, I don't think it gets talked about the way it should. Now, current season, I understand why it's not getting talked about. I'm possibly the only person in North America talking about this on fragrance content right now because it's like freaking July 24th today. Yeah, it's July 24th. Definitely not the weather for it. But I got it not that long ago and I spent a little time with it. And it wasn't the best weather for it, but man. And it's not overly sweet. Like it doesn't smell too gourmandish. You know what I mean? Like I don't necessarily want to take a bite out of the damn fragrance. It doesn't strike me as that level of honey. We do have another honey fragrance here that is much more of a gourmand than this, but has a has the desirable like caramel-like sweetness from the original. You get a little bit of a spicy tone. There's a nice woody element. There's a floral component to this one. It really is the deepest of the bunch. It's the richest of the bunch, and it's just the most enjoyable of the bunch. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Le Parfum's really good. I, I do like the original as well. I don't think there's a bad fragrance among them. Man, I'm pretty eager to wear this one. Scandal Absolute. Shit's getting serious around here now. Because it's no secret if you've been following along this year, because I bought all of the fragrances in this line this year. The Bad Boy line from Carolina Herrera. Very much my jam. My favorite of the bunch, Cobalt. Arguably my second favorite of the bunch, Cobalt Elixir. I did wear this one in the spring when I got it, and yeah, it wasn't the best weather for it, but I do smell the plum from the original, even though I don't list it. You get that truffle note. Like, there's all the sweetness. It's rich. It's thick. Hell, I'm going to give myself a little spritz to enjoy. We're going on a trail hike in a little bit, and it's nice and muggy. It rained this morning, but the sun's out, so it's, like, going to be steaming outside. So, really, this is not a good thing to have on skin right now, but I don't care. We're talking fall fragrances way too early here. It really does tie to the original's DNA. It smells nothing like Bad Boy to me. You don't get that cacao, spicy, vanillic DNA. Here you get fruity sweetness. You get that truffle note. Nice woody facet to it. Hint of spices. Very sweet. Very thick. 
a little on the playful side, obviously. Great performer. Man, I really like this fragrance. I can't wait to start wearing this one again because I've only worn it twice since I got it, and it was it's been a couple of months at this point, and I'm a fan. I'm such a fan. I can't wait to wear this one. We're talking about it way too early, but I'm ready to wear Bad Boy Cobalt Elixir. Now, this one, you would think when you saw the note breakdown that it was going to be very summer forward. No, I think it's much more of an early spring, but especially fall fragrance. You smell Boss Bottled Elixir's DNA here. This is the new release, Boss Bottled Triumph Elixir. I've been eager to get to fall specifically for fragrances like this because it's just a little too potent and heavy for the summertime. Like, this is not going to work well in the humidity. That's why I haven't touched it. It's got this violet leaf, aquatic, ozonic-like freshness to it with all of the resinous smell, smokiness, incense, all that good stuff from Boss Bottled Elixir. It's an interesting fragrance. When I smell it, every time I smell it, I, could, I think to myself that I bet there's people that think this smells terrible because it comes across as something quite polarizing. Uh, it's not some mega mass appealing crowd pleaser, but it's a very interesting slightly unique fragrance that I think does have a strong approachability to it, even more so than its namesake that it's flankered from with Boss Bottled Elixir. Monster performer, too. I mean, this stuff is, like, really, really strong. Can't wait to get the fall to wear this one. Boss Bottled Triumph Elixir. Now, I procrastinated getting this one for a really long time because I was under the assumption it was just a rebottling of the Parfum Edition. I recently picked up Boss the Scent Le Parfum, and I was wrong. It's not the same type of iris. Because Boss the Scent Parfum Edition was the original, thickened up with a higher oil concentration with a little bit of orris at front, up front that fade pretty quickly. If the opening would last longer, that'd be the best Boss the Scent ever. With this one, it's more of a slightly waxy type of iris note instead of a creamy orris butter and a lot more leather forward than I anticipated it to be. This is like really, really good. Like shame on me for going under an assumption. I definitely made an ass out of me. I don't know if I made an ass out of you and me, but I made an ass out of me with this one. It is so good. I can't, and it's not for this weather that I'm currently experiencing. I can't wait to get to fall because this is one I'm eager. Again, this particular list of 10 is riddled with new fragrances I've picked up this year that are just not suited for the current season. Um, I can't wait to start wearing this one. 50 ml is plenty. You see a lot of 50 ml in this video because I kind of gravitate to the 50 ml at this point because I have an absurd abundance of fragrances and I don't need big bottles. But man, if you never tried this one and you like leather and iris and you're a fan of the Meninka fruit and the original DNA, there's no reason not to try it. Boss the Scent Le Parfum. Now, this was the release from last year. This isn't one I picked up this year. It's ideal for the fall. Very, very green. Fall forward, not spring forward. Brioni essential. So this one has a tomato leaf and a bunch of other greens and woods. A little hint of spice, some aromatics. It manages to be fresh, yet very woody aromatic, like very wood, like hefty juniper type of smell. I don't even remember if juniper's in there, but it smells like juniper berry with some greens. And that tomato leaf gives this odd freshness to it. You know, very unique. Anytime tomato leaf shows up in the top notes of fragrances, it usually stands out. And that's the case here. Um, I'm curious to see if and when they're going to put out a fifth fragrance in this line because all four have been really good and really stand out. With the Eclat being my most worn because it's the freshie of the bunch, but the EDP is like a reimagining fruity take on Fahrenheit. And then you have the Intense, which is kind of cheap and synthetic smelling at first with the oud and then it settles into this beautiful oriental spiced fragrance like you gotta really let that one kind of settle down the opening's a little much but with this one from start to finish probably the most enjoyable of the bunch if you like green woody aromatic fragrances and it's perfect for the fall time daytime fall work fragrance very masculine doesn't have too much of a modern synthetic smell to it ready to get it back in the rotation it's brioni Eau de Parfum Essential. Now, new to me and picked up this year doesn't mean brand new release because that's the case here with 212 VIP Black. Spicy, vanilla, evening forward. A little too heavy. A classic, modern classic for a lot of people. Super late to the game on these 212 fragrances. I bought a lot of Carolina Herreras that I slept on for a long time this year. 212 line. I bought all the bad boys this year. Got CH Passion. Hell, I got Birds of Paradise new release. I grabbed that the other day. That's right here still. A lot of Carolina Herrera pickups this year. 
turns out I've been missing out. I had a few fragrances in the past, but not at the level I have now. But this one, definitely the best of the bunch. I've heard there's a 212 VIP Black Extra that's a flanker that's discontinued. That's actually even better than this one is what I was told. I'll prob probably never get to experience that. But here it's a beautiful powder powdered vanilla, nice and spiced and warm and cozy up top. Uh, very sensual, evening-appropriate type of fragrance. Going to be perfect in the fall. So when it comes to these designer date-night fragrances, fall, winter, I actually like to wear stuff like that during the day. When it's nice and cool outside, mild temperatures, doesn't even have to be cold, just kind of in that 50-degree Fahrenheit range, low 60s into the 50s, with maybe a nice little couple mile an hour breeze oh that's that's my kind of jam during the day to wear stuff like this even though it's evening forward doesn't mean you can only wear it in the evening but definitely built for the fall whether day or night 212 vip black this new formula i think is superior to the old formula the old formula didn't have all this nutmeg spice i think the added spice really makes this even better than it always was before valentino womo intense waxy iris beautiful leather very powdery and spicy woody spice nutmeg man it, it can really change the game in a fragrance and this is and i'm saying it here now and i mean this shit superior to diorum intense there's more depth and character here now if you're going to a very formal event i think there's an overabundance and classiness to diorum intense i think that's one of the best options period end of story in a formal setting but slightly more casual than formal in black tie semi-formal on that uh, not the most casual fragrance but i'm not gonna sit here and say you can't get away with it with a hoodie i wear iris fragrances similar to this in this vein with hoodies all the time for years i've done it but i think this is a very evening forward fragrance obviously not the best choice during the day there's still class and elegance here i think the additions of spices and things like that uh give it more of an edge more so than an elegance that's why i think the the overall sweetness and extreme waxiness this mega powdery tone of dior intense just makes it super formal that's a very setting specific type of type of fragrance for me personally i know not everybody feels that way where i feel like in more settings more situations that's where fragrances like this come into and i'm pretty eager to wear it because i just got it not long ago it's valentino woman intense now these last two are just fall favorites of mine you know the year this one came out it was my favorite designer release of the year and uh, i'm eagerly awaiting getting the dark leather flanker this year's release Spice Bomb Night Vision, Eau de Parfum. Still a monster, still a magnet for compliments, still a beast of a performer, still on the unique side for a designer. Sure, there's a little bit of that Invictus-ish-ish-esque, however you want to say it, Invictus-esque or Invictus-ish type of tie-in, but there's pistachio and nutty notes that give it this odd creaminess, and I don't mean odd in a bad way. Odd as in really dignifies this profile and adds a unique tone to it that I don't really get much of in anything else really still with that spicy pimentos and pe pimento and peppers and all that good stuff core DNA without the tobacco woody tones a little musky great performer rich thick wears a little on the heavy side I wouldn't want to wear this one in the summer the EDT is much better for that but fall this is like built for it underappreciated stuff i'm one of the few i'm one of the proud that thinks this is one of the better designers to come out in the last like at least five years i think it's up there like top 20 top 30 designers released i may stand alone on that i don't care it's my opinion and my thoughts because i mean hell what year was it 2021 yeah 2021 this was the year it was released it was my favorite designer release that year Last year, 2023, my favorite designer release, Spice Bomb Infrared Eau de Parfum. Can you tell I'm a big fan of the Spice Bomb line? Guess what's probably going to end up being my favorite designer release this year, even though I haven't even smelled the damn thing yet? Spice Bomb Dark Leather. I never doubt Victor and Rolf because that line speaks to me and my taste for the fall and winter so perfectly that I always have high hopes and they always deliver for me. And I can't wait to put this back in the rotation because I wore the infrareds a lot last year. So this year, I'm looking to go back to this one. Spice Bomb, 
Night Vision Eau de Parfum. Last but not least, the other honey fragrance I was talking about that's much more gourmand, hazelnut, plum, one million lucky. I literally wore one million parfum yesterday because I was thinking, I was looking at the one million fragrances and I'm like, I want to talk about one million here because in the fall, that's when I wear one million the most, the line as a whole. It's like, which one? And I, it was between this and Elixir. I was eyeing them because when winter rolls around, I'm probably going to rock with Golden Oud. Heavy, smoky, spicy, woody, very Middle Eastern feel. Like I, I like that one for the cold. But for the cool, the mild weather, I like the sweet stuff. I like the sweet stuff and I like the spicy stuff in the fall. And this one kind of stood taller amongst the rest of them in the line. Like, yeah, I'm probably going to gravitate to this one more, honestly. I've talked about this one several times already this year. Just It just tells me I'm ready to get it in the rotation. Um, any of you watching this, if you've never tried it, you really should. I'm pretty sure it's still pretty easy to find. I don't know. I haven't looked. I'll have a link down below. I'm pretty sure it's in stock at Fragrance Buy. And uh, yeah, this is one of the better honey fragrances ever. Synthetic, sure, designer, one million stuff. This is a lot of people's favorite version of one million. And I won't argue with them. I'm a parfum guy, but I like all of them. I think they're all good. I think the newest one's the most disappointing of the bunch, believe it or not. Check out my live stream, type in TLTG 1 million gold if you want to see my thoughts on that. A lot of sharp cedar, kind of a basic, disappointing woody fragrance. If you like woody dominant fragrances, you'll probably like it, but I don't get much 1 million and so on. But yeah, just go check out my thoughts if you want to dive deeper. But this is good stuff. Hazelnut, plum, honey, a little bit of spice, a touch of woods, really radiates off the skin, super attractive. You got to like the modern sweet designers to enjoy this one, which... I'm a fan of, and I can't wait to start wearing it again. One Million Lucky from Paco Rabanne. Well, that's 10 designers. I'm eager to wear this fall with literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of the 10 being new to my collection that I bought this year. I got them this year. Whether they're brand new releases or stuff I just bought this year. Um, pretty excited to wear them. Is it way too early? Sure, but who cares? Have you ever watched Jeremy Fragrance before? He's probably got top 10 winter fragrances for 2028 out right now. I've seen him drop winter fragrance lists in spring before for the next year. So not really that early, but early enough. Probably about two and a half months or so out. I would say October is when really everybody's collections and rotations start to shift greatly into the fall fragrances. Some a little sooner, depending on what September, late September's like in your area, but yeah, it's early. Who cares? We talked about some really good fragrances today. If you're interested in checking any of them out, I have links down below. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe before you leave. I appreciate you checking out the video. I hope you have a great rest of your day and rest of your week. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.